Bom dia a todos. Good morning, everyone. Next year, Afrinuk will celebrate its 15th anniversary. For over 10 years that we've been trying to bring Afrinuk to an event like this for our community. And likely this year, we managed to to bring this great event to Angola Luanda so that everyone is able to interact directly. So that the community might interact and talk without a lot of protocols. My presentation is going to be about connecting Africa to the world. I believe that the generation or the young generation, there's some who never heard about fax. Who use fax up to now? Who use fax up to now? Fax. Do you use fax? No. No one use fax anymore. Does anyone remember how long he didn't write a letter in sending to the, the mail services? Uh, I believe that most of the people from my generation, they've gone through this moment. We used to write letters. It was a moment whereby when there was um, no internet in Africa, the few facilities that used to exist in terms of communication was through satellite. So currently, in Africa, we've got about 525 million internet users. And the connection of about 39%, 39% connection in Africa, comparing to 20, 2005, where there was only 2% of connection in Africa. So this summarizes in a specific name, that is internet. Now when you speak about connectivity for the world, we're speaking about having slight technical problem. So, for us, to be able to have this 552 million connection, various organizations contributed for that to happen and for us to be able to develop internet in Africa. There are various organizations. At that moment, we need to use internet. A huge community helped us to create and develop internet in Africa. We have NSRC, that is a U.S. university, 
we have the US aid, we have the new partnership for Africa development, the part, the institution that contributed for the creation of internet. In Angola, for example, we received support from Canadian organizations. We also received support from UNDP and IDRC. These are the institution that help us for us to create the first hubs in order to have internet. I would like to say that in Africa, we have some pioneers that together they helped us to create an ecosystem of internet. In this hall, we had Dr. Nick Honor, he was here and uh, Edmund is absent. So I had a pleasure to meet all the pioneers some years ago. And Nick Honor is there, and uh, as I said before, the opportunity of meeting other pioneers of internet in Africa. In Angola, with the support of Mike Jens, Mike Jensen, who worked us in the Angonet project. And we also wanted to create an ecosystem of internet. Just, you know, the ecosystem of internet, as we call it, Africa Star, is made up of Africa Search is made up of five organizations. We also have Frenic, Afrinic. You know, Afrinic is also one of the pillars of ecosystem. They have other organization. Dr. Nick was here. Is the head of AFNOG. AFNOG is organization that deals with capacity building. And you know, capacity building is important, education is important. Why is that sometimes we don't have access? Because we buy solutions that are well set up. In Africa, especially in Angola, we started internet at the same time, almost at the same time as Portugal and Brazil. Brazil started with having full access in 2005, in Angola, 2006. So we had the opportunity also of developing, but we do not have our pillars well set. So AFNOG gave us all the type of uh, information. So every year they organize an event in Africa. All the operators that started arising, they got support from the community of the African community. And they also got support from ISOC and other institutions. And they created a community inside Africa. We have got AFNOG and we also, we also have Africa TLD or AFTLD. And he also work with other students from Portugal so that we learn how to use this platform and develop our platform and grow. Now you have to buy a platform that's finished with the I cost of know how it's going to be. Yesterday, I'd like to apologize, it's away from the microphone, so I'm not getting what I'm saying. Okay, the members of uh, the government, up last week, the members, they met it last week, and that we played a fundamental role in organizing Uh, 
the Angola Interconnection Forum. We also have Africa CERT, and we've got the representative of Africa CERT, an important group. It has a group related with research, the university students. African Research. African Research is a group that helps us. It's a group associated to the academy. Is there members of the university here? I don't know if there are university students present here. The university in at one side and operators uh, on the other side, but in the countries that are part of the ecosystem so that we can develop our activities. So in 2000, we had about 30,000 people, 30,000 users. In from 2000, we had 30,000 users. Currently, we have uh, currently we have about seven million, seven million, uh, over seven million users with. Uh, connection for about 22% of internet in the country. And we have got some important limestone in Nawa. Since the connection of internet in Angola, we started with the electronic email, and we started with the websites in 1994, and after we moved to so the important uh, stages that led to the creation of our internet 1996 started with the same proof the first server in 1970 uh, the second server and after the internet started increasing and we started using the mobile operators. So the mobile operators, they also helped us a lot in terms of growth. And we also have important aspects that is the creation of exchange point. If before, the information so, at the uh, continent, we've got a pillar that deals with exchange point. And we also have exchange point in our country. And the aim is that uh, the African content should remain in Africa. And now we started having some um, cloud data center in some African countries. And in Angola, we've got two. Two cloud uh, centers, or two cloud computer centers. So all this work was followed with investment in OptiFiber. And some access through the use of satellite. Currently in Angola, we've got three opt fiber, three uh, submaritime sub uh, cables, sub C and sub three. And in the world, we have about 99% of internet traffic via cable. And that was an important stage for all this digital economy would start having improvement. There's the various satellite that covers the African continent and for remote areas. In Angola, for example, we've got an very huge territory and since in some areas we cannot have access to uh, of optifiber we use satellite and we also have 
We also try to develop our ecosystem in Angola through AAPSI, that's the association whereby all the operators, their members, and we also need to include some of the pillars of so that it can be part of this system and enable us to follow up this development in our country. We support the eight principles that are, are called the invariant of internet as you know we do collaboration because in internet we don't vote we try to have consensus so internet is not a site whereby you launch an idea and uh, we ask everyone to vote on to know how many agree and how many do not agree, or how many agree and how many disagree. So normally we ask for a consensus. It's like a win-win situation. So there is no one who is favorite at the internet world. There's no one who is favorite. Today, since there's no favorite, there is no why Google in 2008, the managed to become the greatest search machine. Since they are no one is favorite, we also promote the innovation. Innovation results in a situation whereby everything is developed so that there's competition or else competition. And new elements will be arising. So we support, uh, we support an apps that's developed and after that there will be the possibility of continuing and not something that everything that's used to enter internet, it disappears and it loses its value. And since it's something that's open space whereby everyone can contribute, everything continues to grow. Even the user at home, they can give their contribution so that internet grows. That's an app that is, can be created. Internet belongs to everyone. It does not have an own. It belongs to everyone and in other words does not belong to anyone. Besides this, we also we are seeing the rising of a technological ecosystem of Angola. That's where we have Tupuka that substitute our Hoover. Currently, any traveler who comes to Angola can use some apps, some apps, because we're developing a lot of apps and they're available in internet. And these apps were created by Angolans. Even in Africa, we also have a lot of apps in very different uh, countries. So we're also developing a lot of startups and that's the result of the situation by Africa is growing, and we are also using new content, and we're also using apps that is solving concrete solution of Africa instead of Africans importing solutions from other developed countries, solutions from other realities, solutions from other communities. Africa is they're creating solutions and this is resulting in a great advance advance for the development of the digital world in the African continent.
Like everything, we've got challenges. These are some of the challenges that we have. We have to create an internet. We have to create a platform of in internet platform that's safe for every user. We also have to create sustainable uh, jobs. This is one of the, the challenges that we have created, sustainable new job of opportunity. And also, we have to provide jobs to this new millennium generation. I'll conclude here with this statement. That states good enough is an option. We did a lot.